Hello, we are live. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe we are live. <clears throat> How is everybody doing? Hi, Starving. Hi, Tara. Hi, Belle. Thank you guys for being here. Joseph, huge thank you. I'm not nervous at all. No, not a bit. As I tell on myself. Okay. <laughs> Audio is live. Video is live. Okay. We are good. Let's see. Of course, bear with me as I try to make sure everything is working right. As promised, starving will make a scene. Okay, so yeah, this is going to be fun. I have a complete, a uh, whole new respect for what Lisa and, and Joseph do because trying to be able to keep up with the chat and do everything that we want to do today. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Okay, today, um, <clears throat> let me switch this up here. I am going to be talking about my two new Daniel Smith watercolors. I'm going to add them to my palette. I'm going to swatch them out. Uh, we will, we will create some kind of art with them. What kind? I'm not sure yet, but I have an idea. So we will see. So I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to try my new, these Prince and Neptunes again. If you saw my video that I posted Tuesday, and these were in my art. These were two of the supplies in my art hall. I am also going to be using um, the Canson Montval paper. I've linked everything in the description. So I'm going to be using those those items. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to give my Neptunes another shot because I had mentioned there that I got them. They were on back order forever, and then I thought. Um, I should be, I should try them more. So, and I have my, here's my Daniel Smith watercolor palette. So I'm going to add my swatch to here. And I'm just realizing that I forgot to grab a couple new pans to put them in. So, yep. Something has to happen during a live stream inevitably. And if that's the worst that happens today, then great. I am all about it. So I will just a second. And I'm going to grab two pans. You know, and I had my chair all set and everything. <laughs> this studio is so... Well, my house was built in 1900. So if you set anything down, which I've shown before on video, if I let go of it the wrong way, it's going to go across the room. <clears throat> so there. All right. I have the pants. So now we can hopefully get to it. Oh, might as well stuff together. And these are just, um, you can see those. Hopefully the lighting is better. Joseph was a huge help and helped me address some of the issues yesterday and kind of look at what was going on in the studio. And we made, I made some tweaks based on what we discovered and, uh, yeah, hopefully it looks better. So those are just a little half pans. These also came with like little magnets. So if I wanted to, um, you know, like the old, like the out, not the old, they still make them like the Altoids tins or the little metal tins that you can, um, get mints or something in. They have magnets that I can stick on the bottom of them. And like, so I could make my own little tiny, if I just wanted a small palette, like this is actually the palette that I tend to take with me when I go somewhere. Um, that's why I have these brushes in here but if I wanted a smaller palette then I could just grab the colors I want stick them in there they have the magnets on the bottom 
So normally I will, <clears throat> when I add a color, wherever it's going to be in my palette, I sort of, I will write on them. Usually I take my, like a micron pen and I'll write the color on here so that if I pull them out and put them in another palette, I know exactly what color it is and I could just create a little swatch, whatever for that. Um, this camera just looks like it is the camera that's right here. Looks like it's a little blurry and I think it's just the quality of that camera. I don't like that camera. I'm going to be getting another camera soon. So hopefully that what was what's happening on my desk will, you know, that side view will kind of improve. But for now, so the two colors that I got are, uh, okay. Yeah. I will butcher that. Zoocyte. Yeah. I think Z O I S I T E Zoocyte genuine. So I just kind of take that and I'll mark, and I, this is a zero one. So this is tiny. It helps me actually get that written in there really small. So Zoocyte Genuine, I'm trying to remember to talk and I'm just going to pop this in here first because otherwise I'm going to get paint all over my hands if I try to do that once I put the paint in it. These are dry, so I could take those out if I wanted to, but I find that when I'm putting them in, it's easier for me to put it in the pan and then fill it and then I just let them dry. Um, and so then this one is the Sodalite genuine. And I got these two colors. I was really excited. Um, I saw somebody else use them and the way that they granulated, I had to have them. Okay. So I love this palette. Um, Tara said, that's a handy little palette. I love this palette. Uh, it is a Meaden palette. I purchased it separately and I showed in my art haul video on Tuesday, I got the Pagos watercolor set. That palette is very similar to this one. Um, now Lindsay over at the Frugal Crafter, when she used the Pagos palette for the first time, she said it didn't even beat up. I'm still having, and you'll, you'll see once I start wetting things on this palette, I'm still having a little bit of issue with this palette wants to bead up. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I need to take a, um, like a magic eraser and kind of go over the palette and that'll probably help it stop with all the beating up. So that was the um, Zoocyte, the Zoocyte Genuine. I got this one because the granulation that I saw in it, I thought that this would make a really neat um, color to use for trees. You know, the way that, and I also have uh, undersea green and I'm going to use those. I, I figured I'll do some trees today or something. We'll just do like a landscape. Um, just play with them. I just want to see what they'll do. And I figured I can do that for my first live stream. That's not too hard for me anyways, to, to do that. And, and then still hopefully be able to keep up with chat and everything that else is going on and not forget to talk to you. So trying to remember, um, just for, for reference for you, um, if you haven't ordered water tubes separately, you know, ordered just the individual colors, these tubes. So this one is a 15 milliliter tube and this one is a five milliliter tube. So 15 mLs, five mLs. So you really, you see the difference there. Um, if I hold up that next to that, that pen, just for frame of reference, you'll see 
the size. This one, this color was a lot more expensive, which is why I chose the 5ML tube because, you know, if you saw that art haul, <coughs> I was spending money like crazy. <coughs> Excuse me. So I went with the 5ML and I figured this will definitely fill a pan and I still, I could probably fill two more pans with this. So it's going to last me a long time. Uh, it'll take me a long time to go through the pan. And then also, uh, with the, the zoocyte, it wasn't as expensive. So I was like, well, I'll just get the 15 milliliter too, because I love earthy greens. Um, so yeah, I figured it would definitely be something I would use a lot of. I'm really curious to see how the sodalite genuine looks in comparison to say, uh, moon glow, which is one of my favorite colors from Daniel Smith and so yeah, we're going to check that out too. So well, I'm going to spray my, I'm going to actually, I'm going to take my brushes out of here and then I'm going to spray my palette and check up on questions. So Starving Artist Collective said, what other brands did you use like before you started your love affair with Daniel Smith? Um, before I have, oh my gosh. I'll have to do a video and show you guys um, <clears throat> some of my watercolor, uh, watercolor palettes and my watercolor collection because it's ridiculous. Um, I am new on my watercolor journey and yeah, I try, I, I have a lot of different, I have some Cotman, um, I have... I got some Arteza watercolor tubes because I was just like, Hey, you know, I'm not sure they was a great deal and figured I would try them. Not a huge fan. Um, I love when you do wet and wet. So I love taking, um, I love taking the, when you put your colors in just seeing that whoosh of color that, that goes. Uh, I also dandelion paint company, which is liquid watercolors. So definitely, you know, not going to be something that's going to really be light fast. Cause I believe those are like, um, ink or dye based. I'd have to double check that, but pretty sure. So they are, um, let's make art, which was when I first started wanting to do watercolor, I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to get some, the art subscription box that's specifically watercolor because then every month it was coming in with specific projects and you know clear instruction on this is how you do this this is like wet on wet and and what you can um kind of what you can achieve and my first water oh my gosh my first watercolors were were just horrible which you know it was a brand new medium so <clears throat> i was excuse me, very, very disappointed. I'm just going to spray these while I'm talking because clearly I'm talking and forgetting. So see, I'm going to have the opposite problem. We tell Joseph that he has to talk while he arts. I'm going to have to remember to art while I talk because I'll just talk more and <laughs> not art. So anyhow, um, the Dandelion Company or Dandelion, yeah, Dandelion Company, Dandelion Co. Watercolors they are just little tubes of, um, liquid and those came in and I would use those in like a butcher tray palette. And I started really liking them, which led me down. Okay. What, uh, what else do I want? And then I wanted some that could dry and not leave those kind of all out on that big butcher tray. And, and then I was like, I don't want to wash my palette off and waste them. So I started to look into things. I've got some, I, I have Arteza. I have some Cotman. I have the Pagos, which I haven't tried yet. Um, I had gotten all of these and then I saw, I want to say it was Steve Mitchell. I am all, I'm 99% positive. It was Steve Mitchell mind of watercolor. And he used Daniel Smith in a video. He doesn't normally use Daniel Smith. So it just like happened to be that, you know, the stars lined and he did a video on Daniel Smith because he prefers M Graham, which I really want to try. So the way that those colors just kind of separated and granulated, I was like, 
I have to, I have to try them. So I did, I ordered, uh, if I show you these ones here, I ordered this top row was the first, doesn't want to show up so great, does it? Well, those other colors, there we go. So that top row, I ordered those first and I ordered them because, well, there was the Chinese white, um, quinacridone red, just because I was looking for a better red than I had. Moon glow, lunar blue, undersea green, those three can I, let me try holding it this, hold on, let me switch up and try holding it this way. There we go. That is so weird. Now this is the camera, Joseph, that didn't want to show me anything yesterday. And now today it looks great. So if you see here, moon glow right here, can you see the, there's a separation of colors. You get these like pinks and blacks and then lunar blue, the undersea green, see the, um, the separation you get like these golden, almost like gold, yellow color, yellow tones and green. So yeah, I had to have those. And then the other ones are the interference and the duochrome colors. So the interference colors, they are almost like they look like one shade. They look like one color. This is a good example. It looks like white, but if I tip that, I don't know if I can get that to show up for you. It, it actually goes to like a blue. That one's interference blue. So when you tip that painting or tip that paper, you can see it showing up on these here. They just, they like shift their color shifts. I hope you're seeing that. So <clears throat> I thought those were really neat and I could use them in different techniques. Um, the iridescent moonstone, that one I thought, you know, stars in the sky. Same with the interference blue. I could splatter that on and kind of get like, it's going to be very transparent, but as you kind of look at from different angles, maybe the stars would twinkle or something. I haven't, I haven't tried it yet, but that was my goal for that color. Um, and then I added the, I added, I wanted, I love the Daniel Smith colors. So I wanted to add, um, a split primary because Daniel Smith colors are, they're a lot more expensive. Like, I want to say it's like at least ten dollars a tube on average for most of the um 15 ml size um so you know that's that they get expensive when you're wanting to get you know there's i think there's over a hundred maybe even more than that in their line so yeah i don't have full set syndrome on daniel smith watercolors <laughs> that's probably one of the few things i don't have full set syndrome on there's no way i could afford to do that um but I wanted a split primary palette so that I had warms and cools and I could hopefully, you know, mix whatever colors that I really needed. Um, then I did add the neutral tint and sepia, sap green, phthalo blue, red shade, and then cerulean blue. And I added the buff titanium. Now I had phthalo blue green shade that was in my list on my primaries. And I used ultramarine and, you know, I won't get into, I won't get into color theory, but does anybody else, like you look at the color wheel and they split it and they go this side, so, you know, your warms, your reds, yellows, and then you get over here to your cools, your blues, your greens. But then you say, well, okay, if I have a cool red, it leans more towards blue. If I have a warm red, it leans more towards yellow. Same thing, right? Yellow warm yellow leans more towards red cool yellow leans more towards the green blue side that's easy but then when i talk blue it it was always so confusing like is it a warm blue or is it a cool blue does warm blue lean towards red or does warm blue lean towards the yellow and towards the greens so is it warm going purple to red because I think of purple as like a cool color so yeah that would drive me crazy all the time and then I finally I was just like you know what who cares who cares whether the blue is warm or cold because I'm inevitably going to say it wrong I might get it right half the time um 
but so now what I do is when I think about my blues and which, which blue I want to use, I just think of it as, does it lean towards the green and yellow side or does it lean towards, you know, that purple and red side? And what do I want to mix it with? What else is in my painting? If it's, you know, I want to make a purple, then I absolutely want a blue that leans towards red. And if I want to mix green, then I definitely want a blue that leans more towards, you know, the greens and yellows, and I'm going to get a good color and not a muddy, you know, muddy mess. So that was how I kind of unlocked blue for me. Um, so then with my art haul, I had already, and I already put those in here, the um, Indian was the Indian red burnt sienna. That was the this one again looked like it had great granulation was the geothite brown and then the raw umber because I really like those like I like doing landscapes and I like earth tones so I went ahead and got that so I don't know what colors I'm gonna end up grabbing today I just sprayed the whole palette I do have those new colors in there <clears throat> so I can move these aside bring you back there So let's see. So Starving said, if you paint those interference colors over dark paper or paint, then the color change is so pretty. Yeah. Um, I should grab my, I'll grab my black, I'll grab my black, um, that Arteza, uh, yeah, that Arteza journal that I got or sketchbook that I got. I'll grab that and I'll show you guys. They are, they're gorgeous. Um, I bet you, you that would really, that's a good idea. That will really show up. Okay. So I'm just getting out my, my new, these are my other Princeton Neptunes that I haven't had a chance to open yet. So it is a 10, I've got a 10 round. Um, this one is number six round and a number two round and then this is a one quarter flat wash it's an aquarelle so it has that um pointed if i hold that that way hold that up here it has that pointed edge um so these are my mimic brushes they were in because these were two of my favorites this is the, my number 12 round and my number two um this is a liner or rigor. I love those two brushes, but I'm going to try these today. So I don't know that I'm going to use this one. I'm going to set it aside. Just hook it on my paint pot. And I linked this, I talked about this guy. So that is my paint puck water well. And I love it because it holds your brushes so you can take your brush and leave it facing downward, which is so important for them to dry. Even sometimes when, after I've cleaned my acrylic brushes, I'll hook it around my, them around my uh, paint puck water well so that they can <clears throat> dry. Joseph said it might just, it might just be my way of looking at the color wheel, but I always think toward orange, not yellow or red. Don't know if that makes sense to anyone, but me though. Um, when you think blue, so blues going towards orange would be the, the, no, cause if it's blue, orange is all across from it. So which way are we going? So yeah, that's not helping me. <laughs> that's not helping me, Joseph. I'm not sure. <clears throat> not sure on that one. Oops. I'll pop that one over there. I'm just going to take these off. I have no idea which ones I'll actually grab today. Just getting them open. And I know I'm going to want to wet my paper. So see these, and I'm just pulling out, this is a case that I like to keep my Neptunes in. This case actually 
came the Art Echo brushes, which I've, sh I've shared. I'm sure I've shared on my channel before. They were a decent, um, I used them with acrylics and I got them because I had an art student who was, uh, young and wasn't sure if, you know, his parents weren't sure if he was going to like, um, painting and acrylics. And so we just got a basic set of brushes to start with. And I got, and I got them because I wanted to be using the same brushes he was using because if I was struggling, then I knew he was going to struggle and those weren't the brushes we needed to be using. So, um, yeah, I took those brushes out of here because I don't use them anymore because I'm not currently teaching with that student and they just sit over on my shelf in a jar. And, and I was like, this is great because it'll protect all of my watercolor brushes that are most precious to me. Other than that, a lot of my other brushes are sitting on a, you know, I have like a, one of the rounds. I got it at the Dollar Tree. They have like the pencil holders at the Dollar Tree that are a buck. You know, they're white and they have all the holes in the top. You put them together and they've got the things and it turns like I put mine, I ordered two Lazy Susans because I have two of them. And so I put them that on a lazy Susan. So now when I put my brushes in there, I can turn it and just easily find the brush that I want, but it's not on this desk right now. It's over there, but I did want to try my Neptunes again. So no, I'm not going to use all of these. I'm just going to pick a few. I love this quill brush. Hello, Rob. So I love, thank you for joining. I love this quill brush and it holds a really good point and it will hold a lot of water. So I might use that today. And then I'm missing my other. I have a larger flat wash that, oh, that's like this one. I have a three quarter inch and I guess I didn't pull it, but it doesn't matter. I'll just use something else. And I'm going to go with the number 10. Number six. one is this one is my number two I have my rigger out here because I'll definitely probably use that if I do trees or tree trunks or something like that so and of course this is my number six uh silver black velvet which if you watched my art haul video that's my favorite brush so that is definitely going to be I think I grabbed a number six over here yeah there's I'm not going to use this number six. I can tell you I'll grab that other brush every time. Okay, so I've got some brushes out there. I'm going to grab that black paper so I can show you exactly what um, Starving was talking about with those colors on that black paper. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So this, and this is that, um, the Arteza five and a half by eight and a half. Uh, it's the black paper and I'm going to take a sheet and it is perforated. Is it perforated? Yes. So I'm just going to, I'm going to actually pop a sheet out of this. If I can do that. Oh yeah. So speaking of name suggestions, um, okay. I just lost my, I just lost my cursor here. It's on one of my monitors and heck if I can find it or, or my mouse just wanted to die, which there you go. There's the, what's happening in this live stream. <laughs> I can't select stuff from here now because apparently my mouse doesn't want to work. Fun. I'm just going to plug this in for a moment. Maybe it'll give me a little charge and it, I can get it back. I thought of all the things, folks. I thought of all the things. 
except apparently charging my mouth. <clears throat> so was it starving? Uh, what Tara's talking about, you might have some good named suggestions today too by the end of the live. So what, if you did not see my unboxing video, what was at the bottom of the box? Um, it was, and I don't know if you can see him. Can you see him? Oh, you can only, you can only see a little bit of them right there. Um, my mannequin, I got my mannequin. So I got this guy. And I wanted him for, because I want to do some more sketching. I have not really sketched in so long. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I have not really sketched in, in so, just, just to sit down and sketch and just, you know, play with it. Um, gesture drawings and things like that. But I would, I really want to improve and get back to that. So I decided I was going to grab a 12 inch, um, the male mannequin. I might add a female later. I don't know. Uh, but that was the thing I asked in my video, like, help me name, help me name my, you know, studio mannequin. He needs a name. And Starving, I think you said Bob. So I have an aversion to that. Um, yeah, that's not, can't be his name. Um, but there have been a few really good ones so far. So yeah, if, if you have any suggestions for what I should name my little studio model, drop me a comment because he needs a name. He needs a name. I just, there's so many Bobs in my family. I have an uncle Bob. I have a brother-in-law Bob. Like there's so many Bobs in my family that, yeah, no, I need a different name. Not Bob. Let's see. Now if I can reach, I could not have to reach way over because it doesn't want to work. I used to have my natural hair brushes in a lazy season on my desk until one of the cats started eating them. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. See, I, I no cats, no, no cats. There are no cats in my house. I have a bird. Um, I'm for those who don't know, I think I've talked about him on social media, but <clears throat> I have a son, Conyer. His name is Tuca. And, uh, if anybody else is a hockey fan, then I am in Maine, so Boston Bruins, that's their goalie. That's how he got his name. Um, oh my gosh, that's cute. So Michael Perry says Woody. I, every time, okay, so, so somebody else said Woody and I was like, I could just hear Buzz Lightyear, right? I just hear Buzz Lightyear's voice like mocking Woody. That is so funny. Rob says, or maybe Pinocchio. Oh my gosh. Manuel Quinn. Huh? That's great. <laughs> I love puns. So, uh, anybody that, uh, knows me knows I love puns. That is, that's funny. That is excellent. Okay. We've got, we have definitely got some things to consider there. So this art has a paper just at first, I don't know. This was All right. So it came out. So this is the top. So normally open the cover. This is your, um, you can't see what I'm doing. So open, you know, when you open the book, I would assume this is the side you're expected to create on and that, or that's supposed to be, you know, the front. Uh, oh yeah. Studio, studio Steve. Yes. Um, thought that was funny too, but the backside actually has more texture. So because I'm going to do water, this side, the, the front side is super smooth and the backside has a lot more tooth to it. Um, this is 150 GSM. It's only 90 pound. So this really isn't going to be watercolor per se. I think like my 
Derwent Metallic Pencils would be great on this. <clears throat> Maybe other, you know, metallic um, markers or things like that. So anyways, I'm going to use the side that has more tooth. I'm going to grab... I'm going to grab my new... This is the number 10. This is the Prince of the Neptune number 10. I love this paint puck. This is absolutely my favorite water well. It, I wish I had two of them. I don't. I only have one. I wish I had two of them. One for my, you know, clean and one for my rinsing. But I'm using my... Um, you can't see it because I'm there. Where is my... There we go. So right here is my Faber-Castell. Um, I showed this to everybody in my unboxing um, from my art haul. And I had my paint puck in here. Yeah. I set all this stuff down. I have no idea where I put that paint puck. So, yeah. But that's what I'm using for... Um, clean water. And I'm just going to wet a little area here. Oh, I wonder. No, wrong one. Okay. I don't know if you guys will be able to see that very well on the bottom right corner, but I don't know if that helps or hinders or not sure. <clears throat> So I'm just going to wet this, just wet the paper. I'm just going to drop it in wet on wet. And then I'll do wet on dry here. So you can see the difference with some of these. So the interference colors, this one is the interference blue. And I sprayed that, but I talked to you guys for a while. So I'm just going to spray these again. So this is interference blue. See how blue that is? Oh, that comes out great on this little camera over here. It, this, it, the camera is just a little laggy. So yeah, it makes me crazy. So then there's wet in wet. And then we'll do that down here. Wet on dry. So I am really curious to see how that, how that dries because that is that color right there painted that's a doesn't want to show up very well it's that color right there so that's what it looks like painted on white and that's what it looks like painted on black paper that is that's that yep you're right that is going to be a lot of fun um and i had there's a few others so I bet the duochrome ones will show up different also, but the interference green. So the, when they're in my palette, you see right here in my palette, they look white, but then you put them down on the paper. There is a huge drop of water for all my feral. Put them down on that paper and look at that green. Look at how green that is. Oh, this is just, and this one just shimmers. Um, I have a piece of that Montval paper. So let me show you on there the difference. So just getting an area wet so I can do a little drop it in wet on wet. And then I'll do just like this and show you. move these up so you can see so the first one was that um, interference blue and you see that on white paper it just I, I know that's hard to see but it, it just it has like a almost like a buff titanium look to the color and then 
if I grab the green again, so this is the interference green. Oh, I didn't make that mark down here. So this one almost has um, like a rose undertone to it on the paper. And then do that on the dry. Hi, Jamie. Welcome. Thanks for joining me. And I forgot to show you that blue one. Wet on dry. Put that there. I'll have to get pictures of these afterwards. This white one's not showing up very well for you guys on camera and post these side by side um, over on MeWe. Then the other one, oh, there's the duochrome fire, which is this guy. Again, this paper, this this paper's not, this is not watercolor paper, this black paper. So it is, and it is warm in my studio today, which I don't know why I have a turtleneck on, but I'm just embracing fall. Unlike most, I don't mind cold weather. I actually prefer the cold weather. And um, I love when the snowflakes start flying. Oh, look at that. Oh, I don't know if you guys are seeing that very well. That is like, so as I put that in there, I'm going to have to get some really good quality video of this and post it. It is like, oh, it is sparkling. You just see like, it just shimmers. Like, I think that's my favorite color to watch now. <laughs> you just, all the, all the sparkles. And this is the duochrome Arctic fire. Wow. I don't know if I can get that to show up for you. It is amazing. Yeah, that's not doing it justice. I am going to get my really, I'm going to get my really good um, camera and record that because it will, I think it will pick up all the sparkles. Because when you first put it down, you just see it, it just like lights up. Could you, Joseph, you could see it shimmering? Because I was just like, it doesn't look like it's showing up. Okay, so same thing. And this Now this is on the white. Now this is the duochrome Arctic fire. It's like the palest, looks like the palest green color. I keep going back and forth, which one? Um, it just looks like the palest green color on there. And I don't know, these are dry. So I, I have to wonder if I used them wet right out of the tube, if this would be even more intense because I'm re-wetting, you know, once I put it in my palette and let it dry. And in some colors, you can let them dry in your palette and they look great, but other times, um, Okay, I just totally, <laughs> Joseph's comment just popped in. On the big screen, I can. <laughs> like, it totally distracted me. <laughs> Nobody needs to see me on the big screen. <laughs> so anyhow, um, although, although that is one of my favorite ways to watch YouTube also. So then, there it is, wet on dry. And as it as it dries, this one kind of separates a little bit. I love that color. So those are some of the ones that I, that I did have. Um, <clears throat> now the ear, Oh, the iridescent moonstone. Yes, we have to Let's see what time do we have? Okay. So the iridescent moonstone, this one, Oh, can you see that just kind of, can you guys, unfortunately my studio light wants to shine on that. You just drop, dropping that in wet on wet and it just, 
everything just sparkles and I'm going to get some really good video of this because it almost, you think of, um, like when you drop like a chemical reaction where all of a sudden you drop a, a drop of liquid in and it just fizzes and yeah, that's, that's amazing. See, these are why they, these were, I was like, I have to get these colors. So I just think like if I took that on a dark, and I'm just going to do a few, if I just splattered a few of these in and I'll see when that dries, you know, and I get paint all over me. By the time I'm done, I'll have paint in my hair and paint on my shirt. And I just want to see how that looks when it's dry. So I bet that's going to sparkle really well. Yeah, my, um, that's right. Whoop. You, okay, Rob says it's coming through. So you guys are seeing the sparkles. Well, that's great because on my end, it looks like it's not doing very well at all. So this is it on the white paper, which that's not showing up. I've got to do something about the, I had it earlier. And then, of course, it's getting dark here already. The closer we get to the end of October. By December, by the winter solstice, it'll be dark, like pitch black before I start my life. My li yes, effervescent. Yes. Thank you, Joseph. It'll, it'll be dark before I start my live stream at three. And three o'clock is going to be my regular time today was just a little crazy. I'm not going to lie. I was only slightly stressed, only slightly. Um, <clears throat> and I didn't get to start on time and I didn't think I was going to get to start on time. So I said, well, I'll just start at three 30 instead of three. So I can post it over on MeWe. And then I actually ended up having time to put all my posts and I could have started at three, but I said three 30. So then I sat here and waited and that's when I got nervous, but all good now. All good. This is Moon Glow. And I don't know how Moon Glow looks on black. I can see it. It's such a deep, it looks like a really deep purple on the black. Um, but when you put Moon Glow on right, the white paper, let that soak in for a minute. So that is moon glow. It sees really dark. I hope these are showing up for you. I'm going to try one second. Let me see if this makes a difference. Can you see that? Is that better or worse as far as what you're seeing on the desk now? Because earlier today I had to blow more light in here so you could see. And now, now it's just my overhead studio light, which is ridiculously bright. can't tell them what be cool for galaxy painting. Oh, their moon glow is one of my favorite ones for like that, that galaxy style painting. One of my favorites because it, it separates and it automatically just separates kind of on its own with pinks. So you just kind of get a more like a natural. Um, and then if you throw in, um, like some neutral tint and darken it up. Oh, I don't have, that's one color I don't have. It's on my list is the, um, like a lamp black. I want to get lamp black just because yes, I will use black in some of my paintings. I will mix. I love to mix colors, but sometimes I do like to just grab black. So this will actually granulate or granulate really well. Um, and those colors just kind of separate. This last color. Yeah, this is moon glow. Look at that. Moon glow was the color that I just absolutely fell in love with Daniel Smith paints was when I saw it. And then the first time I used it, I was like, oh, I have to have that. I need that in my life.
yeah, the other ones are, they are really washed out and they're super light. They look super light. So what I'm going to do is when these dry, I'll take a picture of them afterwards and I'll post them over on my um, Clark Fine Art page over on MeWe. So if you don't follow me over there on, on MeWe, it is Clark, uh, MeWe.com slash P slash Clark Fine Art. There we go. See how that starts to separate? And that'll just keep pushing. The colors will just keep pushing out. And oh, it's gorgeous. So I'm gonna I'm gonna set that aside and uh we'll see what happens with that. I'll come back, I'll show you that before we're done. So I'm gonna set that aside. Because I have not tried yet. The two new colors, actually, I can probably swatch them right here. So I'm going to do the first spot is going to be wet and wet. And then next to it, I'll do the same color, um, wet on dry. So for the zoocyte, and that was Z-O-I. S I T E zoocyte. Oh, look at that. The way that it is showing up, I hope that you guys are seeing the like the color explosions that happen with and this guy is amazing. And it has some great granulation. So then this is wet on dry. Pull that out. Drop a little more of that in. And then the other one, the other one was the soda light. And those are both, these are both from, I can see on oh my, in my, in my paint puck when I just rinsed my, can you guys see it in there? Can you see the swirls? It's like, Let's see if that'll show. It's like all sparkly swirling around. I kind of caught it because you can see through the jar. It's pretty cool. Um, I got these. These are from the Primatech line. And I know that there was a lot of controversy. If you follow Daniel Smith, there was a lot of controversy because the Primatech line are supposed to be like they're made with, um, like the sodalite genuine is made with sodalite. Well, apparently there's not, oh, look at that one. Oh, that just went crazy. So apparently there's not as much of the actual sodalite to make up this color as people were expecting or hoping for. And so... And they do cost more. So when that came out, of course, there was a whole bunch of talk on YouTube about that. And personally, I like the color. I'm going to use it. I don't know how you feel about that. Some people were like, they felt really deceived because they felt like it was, it was just pure, pure soda light. That's what you were getting. I mean, of course, you're going to have some binder and such, but you know, apparently they're saying, you know, there's other pigments in there. And I wish, see that, yeah, even the dirty paint water became pretty. It's gorgeous. It like sparkles. You can really see the sparkles now. Can you see them in there? That is neat. I'm loving it. So uh, there's the two new colors that I got and I'm going to let them dry. And this one, if I can get that closer for you guys, those blues, that just had sky written all over it to me. So, and then the green for trees. And I said, so you know what? That's what I want to paint today. I want to test those out and see how these two colors can work to do a quick, you know, landscape and, and try that. So look at that. So that's moon glow and you can get it darker, but that right there is moon glow. 
see how it separates with those pinks and those blues? So if I took that and maybe even some of this with some neutral tint, oh, I bet we could make a galaxy sky that was like, Phew. create a stargate in my water cup. <laughs> Let me see if my uh, my mouse will cooperate now. Usually I just have to charge it for a few minutes and it'll come back to me. Excuse me for one moment while I see if she'll reconnect. Okay, so yes it is. Aha, I got it, I'm back. All right, there we go. Okay, so if you've seen this on my desk, let me just share with you what that is. Now I'm like, I'm excited. You said galaxy and, uh, right, where is, let me find that. I, I mean, just, I'm seeing some questions. So let me just scroll and catch up on these for one second. Belle said, I have a cheap set of Dale Arani, right? Just see if I like watercolor. That's how I felt. I was like, I just want to get a cheap set and play with it. Hence the Arteza tube paints, which I'll have more of that paint than I will ever use. I got these little, <clears throat> excuse me these little um, palette trays to fill palettes, make palettes with. And I was like, you know, I can take, <clears throat> excuse me, some old metal tins and I could throw those paints in there and I could give them to kids that are interested in trying it. Because, you know, of course, I don't trust that Arteza's um, light fast. I just don't. And... I don't remember, I don't remember if the, um, tubes have the pigment information on them or not, like whether it's, you know, PB, whatever, I don't know if it, if it has that, but again, I just don't know if I trust Arteza when it comes to, like, if they say, they say it's light fast and they said their colored pencils were, you know wax based colored pencils and they just break down like crazy in water more so than I thought, which I did do a video about that, but I have another opinion about all of that. Now I'd have to do another video, um, and share that with you. I don't want to get off on a rant because I definitely want to make sure that we try these out and I'm excited about the galaxy sky now. So Maybe we'll do a galaxy sky. Let's see. Starving artists. What are your favorite movies and book characters? Oh my gosh, that is hard. That is hard because you would find it very, you would find it very hard to name a movie that I haven't seen. Um, I am a huge love the movies. I used to love going to the movies. Um, I have an old fashioned popcorn cart in my house. So like we pop the popcorn and, um, soon as I can get my hands on that movie now streaming, it's so much easier. I'm in the, I'm in the back room. We have like, you know, the whole surround sound and everything set up. And I think there's like a 70 inch TV in there. That's how we do movies. So I love movies. I'm still oh, my favorite movies. I don't know. I like, I really like, um, I like a lot of fantasy, um, fantasy, sci-fi. Uh, I love a good action movie, but not like all muscles, no brain. Yeah. I'm not, not all about that. Um, which is what half the action movies of the nineties, I think, but don't go there. There were some good ones. There were some good ones. Um, but yeah, as far as books, it's funny because 
that was always my, that was my first love. My first love was I wanted to, when I was, when I was a child, I wanted to write my own book and children's books. I wanted to write my, write and illustrate my own book. It's still on my bucket list. It is still on my bucket list. I did the, uh, National Novel Writing Month, which is November. I'm not doing it this year because I'm really focusing on YouTube right now, but I have a novel that's like over 50,000 words right now, not finished. Hope to one day, but right now it's not because this is where I want my focus. Um, but I have some ideas for, oh no, it's not Twilight, no. Although I love me a good vampire movie, but I said a good vampire movie. So there's that. <laughs> I, I do love watching like anything that's in, in that whole realm, right? Like in where, oh, I loved, what were those movies? Uh, Kate, Kate Beckinsale. Um, she's the vampire. Why can I not? You guys are probably already starting to type it in and, and, and tell me. Hmm. Why can't I think of what they are? Anyways. Uh, she's the vampire. There's lichens. It's a story of the lichens and the vampires. I loved those movies. Those were one of my favorites in that type of genre. Underworld. Yes. Yes. Underworld. Those were one of my favorite. <clears throat> those were one of my favorites in that genre. Um, but if it's, you know, if it's a good movie, that's like about witches or, or, vampires or werewolves or you know supernatural or or otherworldly creatures um yeah i usually i usually like to watch and sometimes i watch and then you know one of the things we love to say when we're done is you know i'll never get uh i'll, I'll never get that two hours back but but there's a lot that and i'm one of those like i start watching a movie and unless it is really really bad i cannot shut it off like I just, who is it? I don't know if it's Netflix or who it is, but they just did, um, maybe it's prime video. I think it's prime video. It had a new Cinderella. And of course <clears throat> I like all the fairy tales in those too. Um, like I liked the movie with, uh, the brothers Grimm. I liked the stories. Um, but I liked the story. So there's so many stories and I like classic stories too. I like a lot of the, the older, um, I like a lot of older stories. I was reading, I want to say I was reading, oh, I was reading Dracula. That's what I was reading. I was reading Bram Stoker's, um, Dracula and I was loving that book. I haven't finished. I, I will pause and get sidetracked by something else. And then I'll start reading something else. Uh, Gypsy Heart's husband, uh, Jared Smith. I read his book. I was a beta reader for him. Loved his book when I would, as a beta reader. So you're reading it before the editor has their hands on it. So there was things and I was just like, you're reading it for, you know, to provide feedback. And I kept like, Oh, I just want to show him like, Oh, there's a typo here or this is that there or whatever. And, and different things. And, I was like, no, just, it just enjoy the story. So reading through and then once after the editor got it and then he sent it back to me again, like the final one, the final was released. He, he sent that to me and, um, the editor did an amazing job and that book came out great. I loved it. Like once it starts, it just goes, there's no, like, I'm not really building up. You're just boom, you're in it. So yeah, that was, uh, that is Chaos Reigns, Oath Broken. So that, I enjoyed reading that book. That's probably the last book I read. Um, and then I listened to it on audio, on Audible. Yeah, I think it was Audible he sent me a link to. And so I listened to it too. And the narrator, um, I didn't know how I felt about the narrator in the beginning. But then as it kept going, I, I kind of liked him. So yeah, that was that. Um, Jamie Eddy said, whoops. Oh, I lost my way here. Yeah, I just finished beta reading a book. I really enjoyed it. Isn't it fun? And it's like, you know that you have it before anybody else can see it. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. Let's see. I made that jump. So I'm going to go back.
Joseph having me on the big screen. So on my, on, I'm not sure how yours does it, Joseph, but now on mine with my chat, that new way that I just sent you that I got this figured out so I can show everybody what's being said. I actually have these little filters and it'll highlight like the whole line. So if you guys say, if you guys type Angela, it'll highlight on my end. If you type Clark Fine Art, it'll highlight on my end. If you have a question and just type the word question, it will highlight on my end. So you don't actually have to type the at symbol and, and so you don't have to type my full thing thing out. You could literally just type Angela or just type question and, or just type Clark because that'll work too. Um, I filtered all those words in. So if you type any of those, it makes it highlight at, when you type Clark Fine Art, it goes orange like it does on Lisa's screen when we're in Lisa's chat. But on my screen, when you type any of those keywords that I programmed, it actually highlights, puts a yellow banner around what you do. So it, it's easy for me to jump through and see when somebody's trying to talk to me and when you're talking to each other. Um, so Starving asked, how, how do you think these would compare to the Paul Rubens uh, shimmer colors Lindsay likes so much? I don't know. I need to message her. I need to message her. Um, <clears throat> Lindsay, Lindsay actually doesn't live far from me. Um, but I need to send her a message and ask her the Paul Rubens shimmer color. Cause she would just did a video. She, she loved those, um, and see what she thinks of those versus, um, these, because she would definitely get back to me and let me know her opinion. Um, and I, I'll have to share that with you. I don't know because I have not tried the Paul Rubens, um, shimmer. So, you know. Maybe I'll add it to my list and I can compare. But the shimmer of these colors, oh, and, and after seeing that, I'm so glad you suggested the black because after, that is like, okay, let me switch to my desk here for just a second so that you guys can see. Now that that's drying, like, can you see how much shimmer is in there? I mean, even in the splatters, Moon Glow does not have the shimmer. So there's moon glow, no shimmer, but these, the duochrome. And so the, this was interference blue, interference green. And then this was the duochrome Arctic fire. I also have a duochrome oceanic and that one's gorgeous too. But then this was the, um, iridescent moonstone. But look, it's crazy. Like if I really, I think if I thin this down with a lot of water and then splattered that really um, watered down, I bet that would be some gorgeous sparkle to the stars. I'm definitely going to have to try that. Testing paint over here, creating a Stargate in my water cup. Yeah, I'm telling you. Where do you want to go? The Underworld, one of my favorites too. Um, I think Kate's amazing and I love her in that. Um, I like her in a lot of things, so... I'm going to try making some changes for your, for your, um, I'm assuming that was when I was talking about the chat. It's awesome. Thank you for sharing the stuff with me. So I know what the heck I was doing. So now you guys can see what I'm talking to. So I want to try out, I'm going to wet, I'm working. I, I didn't take this out. Maybe I'll tape off a clean edge. We get time. So here, you guys see this? Put all, like, I put a bunch. These are not all my washi tapes. I just got a whole bunch of washi tapes. I did those on my uh, unboxing. But these little things that I keep them in, and then I can just roll it and rip it off and leave the edge there so I'm not hunting for where the end of my washi tape is. This is literally one of those cheap box signs um, that you can get at the dollar store. They'll probably, they probably have some out now because Thanksgiving, usually they have them around Thanksgiving, 
Valentine's Day, Christmas. I got to go look because if they do, I need a few more because I got a bunch more washi tape. And I just thought they're perfect for holding your washi tape in. And then I can just take it out. <clears throat> now I will take it out and tape my border off. And so this is the Montval um, by Canson. And I'm just using the last page in the book so that I don't necessarily have to take it out of the book. But I do, as that rolls up on me, I do just kind of want to tape off a border just because I like a nice clean edge. And if we're going to test these out, we like a galaxy type. I don't want to put my head in the way of the camera, so. And doing this quickly, this border is probably not going to be perfect, but it will be good enough. <clears throat> there we go. And thank you all so much for joining me today. I'm so excited to see you all here. You just have no idea. I was like, well, I told Joseph I, I might be streaming and it might just be him and I and, you know, one or two others. But, you know, I nine, I think at one point I saw 10. And thank you. Thank you for joining me. Um, one of the other things, and I'll have you drop, drop some comments in. What I want to know is because today my biggest struggle was what are we going to do during the live stream? <clears throat> Originally, my thought was I get the art subscription boxes and I get three of them. And uh, special announcement. Um, so I get three of them. And I used to get smart art and of course I've done six months of smart art box and I've done that video. I did the video like which art subscription box is the right, is right for you. When I was planning for that video, um, I did, I did scroller box, um, let's make art watercolor box, which is how I started getting into watercolor. That's what inspired me to get into watercolor was Sarah Cray. I love her work. Um, palletful packs. I did art snacks and it was scrawler box. I say scrawler box, scrawler bark, scrawler box, smart art box. Um, let's make art watercolor. Palletful packs and Art Snacks Plus. Palette Full Packs Premiere and Art Snacks Plus. So those were, I think those were most of the ones that I had in that video. And after that video, I canceled, I canceled Smart Art and I canceled Smart Art only because it was the most expensive box. And now I'm just like, it was the most expensive box. And it also, um, gave me the biggest variety of mediums. So I will say that I am not knocking smart art in any way, shape or form. I think they are amazing. And in fact, if they want me to do more videos with their product, get a hold of me because I absolutely would. I loved their boxes, but it was my most expensive box. And I wanted to be able to bring you a bigger variety because, you know, I didn't know like which box is going to be best for me. All those different mediums, while I think it would be fun for me to play with them and, and probably more fun for you guys to watch me make a fool of myself trying to create with them. Um, I wanted something that was going to be a little bit more geared to like, I like to paint, I like to draw, um, I like those kind of mediums. I don't want to sculpt and model with clay or, you know, other random art craft type supplies, which I could end up getting in smart art. So I went with palette packs and smart art. No, I went with palette packs and art snacks plus palette packs, premier art snacks plus. And I have 
eight of each of those now. So I am two months overdue with bringing you six months of each of those boxes. So I'll be doing that. Um, but in the interim, because I knew I was getting ready to be at that six month and usually at six months, I'll drop one off and get another one so that I can start pulling that in and, and see if I like that better or, or, or worse or whatever. Um, so my new box that I got in, I have three of these right now and I, I you're going to see videos coming up on these because I am absolutely buckling down to a schedule and it is my goal to see you live every Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. I am in Maine in the U.S. So 3 p.m. Eastern time and probably three or five today. We'll probably go, I don't know, five. We go to 530. You know, that's fine. I started late. It's fine. Um, as long as, you know, Joseph can stay and keep this chat under control because starving was just putting on her troll costume. I saw it. So, um, I got up crate. So up crate was the other box. And the reason I chose this box, I wasn't going to actually show you that today, but I would have looked it up. There was someone in my comments of the, which art subscription box is best for you that suggested that box. It is out of Germany. So that box comes from Germany. It's pirate themed. Uh, pirate themed as in the sense like the characters are pirate in the books and they're like a matey and you know, whatever. That's not my best pirate accent. Sorry. So they have that box is 22 euros. It comes out of Germany. Euros, right? The little E symbol. Um, but that's, it's approximately 25 us dollars so far. I've enjoyed, um, what's going to be, I haven't opened the last one yet, but I peeked. I didn't fully open the other two, but I peeked at them because I do kind of like to open them when I film it. Um, but I kind of looked online, not going to lie. And I think I'm going to like some of the things that come in these boxes. Now at $25 US, 22 euro, uh, it's coming from Germany and it's shipping free worldwide, worldwide. So that was a hindrance. Like I liked some of the scrawler boxes and scrawler box just sent me a thing and said, Hey, we've got these two boxes you can get. And I went and looked and I was like, oh, brilliant. I can pick these up. And it's like $36 for both boxes. I love them. One had like ink tense blocks and another had, um, <clears throat> Dale or Rowney watercolor. Speaking of Dale or Rowney. Um, and I was going to get both of those cause I wanted to try those watercolors too. So I could compare them. So I put them in my cart and I'm like, okay, this is good because I'm definitely got the value here. I looked up what the individual items would have cost and I'm like, perfect. The value's there. I'm going to get these boxes. Then I went to go check out and it took me from $36 to like $53 and some change. And I was like, uh, no, the shipping from the UK to the U S is ridiculous. Now, again, I loved scroller box and if scroller box starts seeing me do all of these art boxes and they want me to do one of theirs, I'd be happy to have them send me one. But for the cost of the international shipping, mm -mm, I just, I couldn't do it. I was that, that was one that had to, had to go. I don't, I have two scroller boxes that I have purchased and that was one that I didn't continue. And that was the only reason I didn't continue it. So yeah, I'm going to be adding the up crate box. And when I do add that and have my video, they're not sponsoring it. And they did not send me that box. I bought the boxes on my, with my own money, all of the art boxes I have purchased, I have purchased with my own money. Um, but I will have a 15% off coupon for you guys. So if that's something you're interested in, that video is going to be coming soon. So Stay tuned for that because I will have a coupon for you guys to get 15% off if that's something you want to try. So that being said, um, yep. And it's gone. Wow. It just went, I lost it. Oh, we're talking about schedule. So I want to have an actual schedule and 
So I'm just checking out Tara's comment there. Uh, Tara's right beside the UK and she gets ridiculous shipping prices too. From Scrawler Box, you get the ridiculous ship. See, I think it's, it's, isn't it like it's free shipping in the UK? But unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm not there. I would love to go. Take a, take a jaw across the pond. I'd have to take a plane. Uh, I can't do boats. Mm, no, I'd be sick. Um, yeah. So schedule every Tuesday. So I want to be putting out a video on Tuesday. And so that video, I think, is where I'm going to unbox the art subscription box and, you know, have fun because I'll edit it. I'll still let you see all the ridiculousness. Um, but those videos tend to be what's watched most on my channel right now. So I'm going to push those as a regular video. And then I'll have plenty of time to get all the research and get you all the information and really go comprehensive like I did on my six month of smart art um, and I'll end up trying to post the, um, a link to that after the, this is over. Um, and then I'm going to be bringing the six months of palletful packs and the six months of the art snacks, but I also want to actually open these up individually and really dive into the boxes and play and have fun. So that led me to my question. What do you guys want to see in live stream? What do you want to do when we're hanging out? Because you're the ones that are here. And I appreciate you. So I want to know what you want to do. What are you interested in? Because as far as I'm concerned, when I do my live streams, this is time for us to hang out and chat and catch up and create. We can create things together. We can, I'm going to just start wetting this paper and let me bring you back to the desk. So I want to be able to, um, you know, create together sometimes and <clears throat> I want to know what you guys are interested in, what it is that you want to do. Even if it's something I don't normally do, I'll try anything once within reason, sometimes beyond reason, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's have fun. I have no problems laughing at myself. So, you know, if we, uh, now I'm just, if you can see, I don't know if that's showing. Okay. Can you see the glossiness, right? If you look in the bottom right of your screen over here on this camera, you see that glossiness that's on that paper. I want this to be really, this paper to get really wet so that I can do some good wet and wet techniques and act like I'm a professional with watercolor. <laughs> really guys, I am very new to this medium. So bear with me. You'll probably see me do things here or there at some point that some of you are, who are much better at watercolor and be just kind of cringe, but you know, drop me a tip. Let me know. <clears throat> my favorite medium, my favorite medium and subject. Um, so my, it's kind of, I have, let me show you guys. I'm going to show you real quick while this is kind of absorbing some of this water. Um, working at my easel. So if I pop this guy up, oh, wait a minute. I think I can just, hold on one, bear with me. Ah, there it is right there. Okay. So this is my easel, which is to my left. And on here, so far it's not, um, can you see that a little bit? Well, that washes out the line work I've already done on there. I started the sky, didn't care for acrylic is my first love. So my first love is acrylic paint. <clears throat> I started this, this is way too blue. I've got to tone this down and this, there's a uh, sky and I wonder, I bet you I can show you my reference photo. Um, I was commissioned to do this piece and let me show you, boom. So whoop. there's my reference photo. So you see the, the undertones, if you look at that reference photo, the undertones are starting, but it's still a little too blue. I've, I've got to glaze over that and keep going. I stopped here because you see in the reference photo, here it starts to, um, you know, the blue, sh sh uh, the blue changes and it shifts. 
So as I am working my way down, that's in sunsets, one of my favorite things to paint. The ocean, water, water is another, I love it because I feel like I'm horrible at it. So I have to paint it. I have to paint it all the time. And um, yeah. So that's my easel. That's my easel cam. And so I would not have a problem doing that and actually painting that commission live with you guys. I, I wouldn't have a problem doing that. That'd help me get that commission done. Um, and the person that that's for would probably love it because they would actually be able to watch their painting being done. Um, where is my, right there. If you guys, you guys can't see what I'm doing here, but I have my, my handy little control center over here that I just keep, I'll show you for those of you who are interested, see oh, my control panel and that has like all my different scenes on it. And I can just tap a button and transition it. And that's the magic, folks. That's the magic behind the live stream. So <clears throat> that is nice and wet. So it's probably dried a little too much, but I'm just going and wetting this again. I'm not putting as much water down this time but I just want to make sure that that paper is still wet because again, for whatever reason, probably because I was so nervous earlier, it got hot in my studio. Of course, I'm wearing a turtleneck and a, well, not really a sweater, it's a cuddle dud, if any of you guys know what that is, kind of like a sweater. So Starving says, good idea. So yeah, if that's, if that's one of the things that you would like to do, like I would be more than happy to jump on there and see you make a, see, have you see me make a mess of this. But then in the end, you know, I, I embrace the ugly layers because there can be a lot of ugly layers. So if you guys want to do that, I'll do that next week, starting on, um, Thursday at three. And then we'll take it from there and we'll just keep, as we talk, decide what you guys really want to see um, beyond that. And if you have other ideas today, drop them in the comments. Let me know. I want to know what you're interested in because that's exactly the kind of thing that I want to be able to bring you. So I'm going to grab, now we're going to try, I wanted to kind of like, I'm thinking night sky, almost galaxy. Um, so I'm grabbing some neutral tint. I'll put that over here on my palette and you're not gonna be able to see my palette so great. I'm going to turn that a little bit. How's that? Cause I'm going to mix up here. I'm telling you at uh, what, like noon, I think that was the perfect time to film in this studio because the lighting was wonderful. Um, racing for the beach after this, like Lisa, and I'm not a hot weather person. I, yeah, I'm not a hot weather person. I do not. I love the beach. I love the beach. I love the ocean. I love to go there. Um, I love to go there in the fall. Oh, I told, I told Lou, um, that is my husband. Um, I told Lou, I said, we have got to go. So I'm just dropping in. I'm just dropping in some neutral tint. I really want to be able to get some good granulation in my sky. And I'm going to grab some moon glow. I know this will definitely separate and give me some of those pinks and I want to make sure I wasn't touching my lunar blue. Drop some of this in. I kind of want a palette. I have one 
that has like the deeper well so you can just pull it out like this because I feel like as I'm swirling my brush here in my palette, which you guys can't see, but I feel like as I'm sitting here to get that color and I'm swirling my brush in that palette, like I, these are Prince of Neptune brushes. I don't want to risk damaging <clears throat> those brushes. So just really heavily dropping in. This is the um, Moon Glow. And I can already start to see a separation of colors happening here. And I think what I'm going to do, because I wanted to try those, the whole purpose today was to try out those two new colors. I think this is going to give us a really nice granulation. Oh, thanks, Belle. I'll have to look that up. So Belle said, Mural Joe has some great videos explaining techniques for painting all sorts of different oceans and rivers, and it helps tons. I will absolutely look that up. So I have... Um, talking about next week. I don't know if that's something that, I mean, it, it's just, a, it's a couple in, you know, in front of a um, sunset, which you could absolutely paint right along with me, not put the couple in there. Um, so if that's something that you would like to do, by all means, um, grab your supplies and we'll paint it together. I will make sure that I list what colors and I will be scheduling that ahead of time now, especially now that I know what I'm going to do. I will schedule that ahead of time and make sure that the colors are in the description and I will try to post that, you know, a day or so early so that you can be prepared if it's something you might want to do. And maybe you have a silhouette of color, a couple that you want to put to personalize it for you. You could absolutely just overlay it. Um, I do have the line art that I drew out for the couple. Um, so I've added in here, just kind of tell you where we've gone with this. I'm just keeping below the edge wet. So I have a nice soft edge. Now, I've added my neutral tint and the moon glow. And now I'm going to throw in a little bit of that. Put this over here. This is the, this is the soda light. And I'm just going to drop some of this in, in places. Look at that blue. That's excellent. So I'm just going to drop it in. Now it needs, it's going to, unfortunately, because I want these to granulate and separate for you, I'm not going to be able to hit this with a hairdryer to dry it before we leave today, but I will let it sit to dry and I will, um, if it's not enough for you to see, I'll let it set to dry and take a picture and post it over on MeWe. So basically I've left this area lighter, right? For like, kind of like that Milky Way, that galaxy. And that was where I put just moon glow. And you see that it has really separated and it's opening up and I'm getting in this paper. I would definitely stretch this paper and tape all four sides down. I just taped a border because um, it is pooling, you know what I mean? It is buckling and shifting. And this is the um, Montval from... Hansen. But again, I wanted to try it. That's the whole reason that I got it. Um, let me grab me a paper towel. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just grabbing a paper towel, um, drying off my brush, and I'm just going to come in at the edge, the very edge where all this color is pooling and just absorb some of that off of there. Just absorb it'll it'll pull back to that location. I just want to take some of the edge off. Uh, 
Hi, Caution. Well, thanks for joining me. I'm, I'm still going for a little while. Still, still going for a little while. Uh, hopefully it's gone smooth and everybody's been happy with what we're doing. Um, so now I'm going to throw some, I'm going to throw some trees in here and I'm going to use that new color, the zoocyte. Hi, Ben. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hold on a second. Uh, so Ben asks, would you ever shave your head to do something bold and different and even create a piece of art with your hair? Great question, Ben. So you can't really see it right now, but my hair is like, it goes and goes and goes and my hair's quite long. I think, in fact, when it's pulled in front of me and I'm sitting, it's touching the seat of my chair. So braided. So I don't know that I would cut my hair. I might cut part of my hair and maybe do some kind of art with that. Um, or actually my preference would be to cut it and then, you know, donate it for a locks of love. But would I shave my head? Hmm. Yeah, I don't think so. Never say always or never. That's what I, I believe. Never say always or never. Um, but I don't think I'd ever shave my head. No, I don't think that that would happen. But thank you for asking. That's a great question. Oh my goodness. Um, okay. So I'm going to grab some of the, this is the Zoocyte Genuine. And adding just a little bit of water to that. And I'm going to actually, I'm going to add a little bit more because I want to thin this one down because these are going to be, I'm going to do trees in the back. I'm just kind of, kind of do that. Like they're much further back. Although at this time with a sky like this, they'd probably be dark, darker. And if I need to darken them up and then I'll just take some neutral tint and I'll do that. So now I want to make sure, like I just loaded that brush, but it has got a ton of paint and water in it and I don't want to let out a ton. So I'm just going to dab that on my paper towel. And again, I'm still using my number 10. I've used my number 10 round for almost this entire thing, which is one of the things that drew me to that Pago set because you don't need a lot of brushes. You don't need a lot of brushes for watercolor. No, that needs to be stronger pigment. That's still really wet on the paper. So I'm just picking up more of the straight pigment and I'm just going to kind of dab that in and let that kind of push out. And if you can see, I'm just kind of back and forth. I want I'm not making f really fancy trees. I want these to just kind of blur out. So I'm just kind of a little bit of zigzags and just let them go. These are going to be in the background. They're going to do their thing. They're going to dry lighter, right? Some just little lines that will just infer those trees back there. So you see, I'm all I'm doing is just pulling down lines. Pulling down lines. And I could even do these trees. I could save this green color for the front, and that would be a better idea. I'll save the green color for the front. I'm going to put some really dark ones. So I'm going to grab my um, neutral tint straight out of the pan and I'm going to make these dark. There we go. So these are just going to be dark. They're, they're the trees way far away. This is nighttime. They're going to be dark. You're not going to see the green in them. And if I just, cause this paper is so wet, if I just pull that line down and just do a couple like this, it's going to spread out and it, it it's going to soften and keep these trees really soft in the background. So right now you see, I'm just putting some lines down, right? And I'm just going to come and just kind of wiggle and push some of that paint out. Different heights. Not, I don't want them all to be exactly the same size. Some of these look like they're pretty much the same. I'm going to vary my heights, vary some of the spacing. 
that is just, I'm loving the way that that's starting to look. And that's the thing about like wet and wet. I love, that's one of my favorite ways when I'm playing with watercolor. Because at this point, I still feel like I'm playing with watercolor because I'm learning. That's, I mean, that's how we learn. Grab your, grab your supplies and just, just start throwing them down on, on paper or on canvas and see what they'll do. See what you get. Did you like it? Great. Do it again. Um, did you not like it? Okay. Don't do it like that next time. Try it, try a different technique and see what you really like. So that's pretty much like, that's the way I have been doing. Um, uh, I, I've, this is how I've, since I started my watercolor journey, like I said, I started with the liquid watercolors and those are very, very bold, very, very bold colors. Um, very vibrant, I should say very vibrant colors. So now they have these trees down. I'm just rinsing my brush and I'm going to come back in just with a damp brush. I'm like wiping that off and right at the base, I'm just going to kind of, I just want to base for these trees and I want that color to kind of be able to fade down a little bit. So maybe there's, uh, some fog between my rows of, of trees. Okay. And then I'll let that sit for a minute and I'll come back in. I'm going to do another layer. Um, and then I'm going to throw my green trees on that. I, I want those to be bigger because I really want to see how that color is going to granulate. Yeah, Bell, I thought about using, <clears throat> so Joseph said, I've tried throwing down the paint on the paper and I find it helps a lot to use a brush though. <laughs> hey, maybe just, you know, there's, there's artists that just throw the paint at the paper. Uh, but Bell said, I think I might need to investigate. No, that was Tara. It jumped. So I started reading the wrong thing. Bell said, I think I'd love it on the block paper more, but it's very pretty here. And so I'm going to do another one because if you remember... Bell, you were there when I did that um, unboxing. I got that Paul Rubens block and I've been really wanting to try that out. So I think I'm going to do something similar. I have a, I have a cool idea for a, a Halloween type painting. So I'm going to do that and I'll definitely post it over on MeWe once I do that. But I want to test that out and, and I'll record it. And if it comes out great, I'll share it. And if it comes out not great, I'll share it either way. We either, we either create a masterpiece or we learn, right? That is like one of my favorite sayings. Um, and that is based off of, um, was Mandela said, now I'm trying to get, I don't want to misquote, but, uh, basically we succeed or we learn. So when I think about my art, I create a masterpiece or I learn. Anytime I don't like my painting, I have learned a ton and improved my skills. So I never fail. I never fail. I succeed or I learn. And that's what the Mandela quote is. And it's one of my favorites. So I'm grabbing more of the neutral tint and I'm just going to come back in and do another section of trees. These are kind of bigger. And usually I would let this dry before I did my next row of trees because they just kind of want to blend into each other but we're just going to make the best of it. And I love evergreen trees. I do, uh, what is it? Maine. Maine's the pine tree state. Is that right? I should know that. I shouldn't have to guess that. Lots of trees here.
Yeah, I'm going to have to go back and read the chat afterwards because, man, I didn't get to keep up with all the chat between you guys. I'll get better. I'll get better. All right, I am going to actually, this is looking excellent up here as far as for Galaxy Sky. I'm going to take this and I'm going to hit it with my hair dryer just to get a little bit of this dry so I can really come on top with that green so we can see what it does before we have to go. So, I'm fortune yes the pine tree state see i thought so and then i like i is you ever do that you say something out loud and then you go wait a minute is that right is that right yeah okay that is like yeah that can that camera's going to improve guys i promise because it's it's just wretched right now all right i am going to dry and uh Hopefully this won't bother your ears. Okay. Hopefully that was not too bad. A tauntaun. Oh, I thought they smelled bad on the outside. <laughs> yes, I am a huge Star Wars fan. All right, just letting that cool a little bit. It's not completely dry, but it is definitely... Oh, but look at the... Can you see like the mist in the... Like the misty trees? And look at the sky. I like it so far. All right, I, now I'm gonna add the green because I really wanna see what um, what the uh, zoocyte is gonna look like as it granulates. So I'm gonna go into, hang that one up over there. I'm gonna grab my clean water. This was that zoocyte and I wanna get more in there because I want plenty of that pigment because this is such a nice granulating color. I, I want it to shine. And I'm, um, hmm, I think, yeah, it's, we're going foggy, right? I could, I'm just wetting down here where I'm going to put these trees just so that they'll soften up. And I think I'm going to need to put a little bit of neutral tint in that and darken it. It's That's a little too light for the rest of the painting. And bringing that neutral tint in, um, it won't affect its ability to granulate, but it will make those trees a lot more cohesive. So, And I lost my paper towel. So here, the other thing you can do too, if you have too much water, and, and if you're already watercolorist, I'm telling you stuff you probably already know. But you can hold your paper towel at the base of your bristles and that will just suck out some of that water but leave the pigment in. You'll, it'll start to draw up and you'll start to see, like if you see there, I started to get pigment here, but this is all water. So I can draw out some of that excess water so that I don't load my paper with too much. And then I can come back and just grab the pigment that I've mixed and drop that in. And I still think that is a bit too light. So next week at three, I will be working on my couple in the sunset. Um, that photo was actually taken. That photo was taken on on Cape Cod, I believe. Not by me, um, but that photo was taken on Cape Cod. Hi, Sheila. 
I just saw you being live. Good for you. You have regular schedule now. Yes. So for those who are did not hear earlier, I am going to be going live now every week on Thursday at 3 p.m. So next Thursday, there's a we're doing acrylic. There's a commission that I'm working on and I will be painting that while we chat. Um, I have asked what you guys would like to see me do during these live streams because your feedback is important to me. You know, you're the ones that are watching. You're the ones that are going to be um, giving YouTube that valuable information for what my audience likes. I want to make sure that I am creating content that you like and want to see. So please, if you have suggestions, if there are things that you would like me to do in the future, let me know. Um, is next week, next week's not Halloween, right? Please tell me I have another week. How many Thursdays do we have between now and Halloween? Somebody could drop that in the comments. Hi, Marty. I didn't see you come in either. Hello. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I am, I'm so excited that you're all here. Uh, it has definitely made this fun. And I got to tell you, as nervous as I was, I'm not now. And that's definitely because of all of you guys. So thank you. I've been... I've been wanting to live stream for so long. Starving, you know, you've been threatening to be my troll for months. <laughs> and I just, uh, I was so nervous to do it. But now that I've done it, uh, some examples of negative painting. You know what? That's a great, that is a great suggestion because that is also something that I myself have been wanting to work on. So if there's anybody that's not into watercolor or necessarily knowing exactly um, what Marty's talking about, you know, negative painting is when we're preserving the white of our paper and we're painting in that space. We're painting in the spaces around it. So our subject matter may be light and we've got to paint our background or our shadows and our midtones. And we just have to preserve like, we have to preserve that white of the paper and paint all the negative spaces. Um, so that's a great idea, Marty. In fact, I want to write that down, painting negative spaces, because I do have an idea. I have a couple ideas. In fact, I have to say, I found a one that paint negative spaces. Painting negatively in watercolor. That's not, that doesn't mean that you are painting angry. <laughs> the, um, see, I see pumpkins. Joseph posted pumpkins. That should have been two. Clark, fine art. Thursdays at, uh, Thursdays until Halloween. Two Thursdays until Halloween. Oh, that is excellent. So, I saw, and I know Joseph is painting a jack-o'-lantern um, in his live stream, which is why I did not, I found it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. I want to paint it. Um, but that's why I did not do that today. However, that's not to say that I won't do it. I just didn't want to do it today. We're right there in the middle of his project. Um, however, I'm putting extra of this on. Simply because, you know, it would be the ground. I want to see the granulation. So if you're seeing me just kind of dabbing this darker green in here, it's because I want to know, I want to know how it's going to separate as it dries and what kind of granulation I'm going to get. So, <clears throat> so we have a little bit of misty fog in our trees and our sky. And I want to drop in just a little bit more darks because this, now that this is dry, you see how much it's lightened up. And I think I want to put a little bit more of the, um, oh, I'm going to get these right. This is the first time. Sodalite. Blue is the sodalite. Zoocyte is the green. So I'm going to put, I'm just going to wet 
very lightly um, cause I, I don't want any harsh lines here. So I'm just going to wet a little bit of the surface. I'm going to leave it lighter as it approaches the trees. So I'm not going to go that far down and then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to drop some more of that soda light. Drop that in there darken kind of vignette that darken it up just different areas and I'm just kind of scrubbing and inputting it here and there I want some areas right I was going for a kind of galaxy feel so I want some areas to be darker some to be lighter I want the blues I want the purples and then I'm going to go back to my um, moon glow and I'm going to bring some of that back in near the center because that's what gave me that the and I'm not going to cover all of it because I want some of that really light pink that I ended up with there I want some of that to stay I'm going to drop some moon glow in here and there and then we'll let that let that kind of do its thing now I'm going to clean my brush off and I'm going to dry that so that I just want it to be damp. So I just basically, I just tapped it to my, uh, to my paper towel there. And just because I want to come at the edge here and I just want to soften that edge. So I don't end up with a hard edge between my trees and my sky. And they also see a little bit of a hard edge forming right here in the middle. And I'm going to kind of lift out a little bit of that. So I just with a clean, what I did was clean brush. And again, I don't know how many of you do uh, work in watercolor. So I may be saying things you already know, or I may be doing things that you're going, Oh no, don't do it like that. Don't. But you know, I am all about sharing and dropping tips in the comments. So feel free. If you have a tip that you think could help my process, I am all about sharing. I am all about constructively sharing in a positive way because I think we can definitely help each other. Okay, so there is that. And I've got, I don't know if you guys can see it. I don't know how well that's showing up on your end. Um, You see the granulation that is just happening, all the colors that are separating and moving, and that is just all coming through the greens, and it's looking a lot, that's looking a lot brighter as I hold it up there than it does down here. There's a lot more neutral, um, neutralizing in the colors. So the other thing that I wanna do is, when this dries, I am going to take one of two products. I, I think I am done with these for now. I'm just gonna kinda let that dry, but move it aside. I am either going to use, now I could have done this in the beginning and tried another product that I got. Um, I could have in the start taken my, which I want to try this. Let me just jump over here to me. So I could have got taken the Daniel Smith um, masking and I could have placed a bunch of little tiny, tiny dots here, there and everywhere and preserve the white of my paper and I could have used that for my stars. Now, I'll save this for when we do a project on negative painting. So that will be in a future live stream. Um, so today it's either gonna be Dr. Martin's, uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White, which this is not linked in the description below, but I will link it. Um, or I do have, um, this is gouache, and this is Holbein, Holbein gouache, and this is white. So I'm going to use some white gouache, or I can use Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White, which basically is very, very similar. It's like a, I think Dr. P.H. Martin is like a bleed proof ink, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, it's October. Maybe we'll go with this. Um, and then this is just white gouache, which of course you can use. And I just want a little to spatter 
some tiny stars. If I do this while this is kind of still wet in my sky, it's going to, um, oh, this needs to be mixed up. Sorry guys, this like is needing to be mixed. So what I do normally, I just take my jar, put a little bit of it in the lid and I'll go back to my desk view so you can see what I'm doing. So I put a little bit in the lid and mix that up. And then I can, if I need, I don't need to add water because this is kind of separating and I think this will splatter just fine. Um, but if I needed to, I would add a little bit of water in here and mix that up so that it was consistency to where I could splatter and make a big old mess. So this is usually when I end up with paint, white speckles all over my paint. Um, I'm going to dry this really fast so that I can put these final techniques on so that you'll be able to see that because it's now 530 and we've been going for two hours, which is great because it didn't feel like two hours for me. I was like, it feels like we just started. So if you have any other questions, please drop them in because as soon as I'm done with this, I'll go through and answer or respond to all of you before um, we end up. So again, and I hope that doesn't, did you guys hear the hair dryer? Did it just cut it right out? I hope it cut it out. I didn't dry the trees because I want to continue seeing that granulation because that's what today was about experimenting with these two new colors and seeing what they could do. So I've left that. Now, what's your favorite way to splatter stars? Do you like to come in and just put a dot and just keep dotting? And I, I don't. I definitely don't. Um, no, I do need some water in this because it's not wanting to, I'm going to test it on that black piece of paper. Ooh, I'm, you know what else I'm going to do? Oh yeah, that's, that's going to be perfect. Okay. So I always like to test on it before I go in on my painting. So, and of course, now that I going to splatter some of these in there. One of my favorite brushes to splatter is a very stiff bristle brush. And I wasn't thinking splattering today, so I didn't bring it over. I should grab it. It's not like it's very far for me to reach. It's just over there because it makes beautiful small stars. Um, and we'll get those on there and then I can answer. So I like to grab and these guys, this is a really cheap, you see them all the time. Um, you know, the brushes you either get rounds or you get flat, the wooden handles. This is a number four, uh, these brushes and they're like hog bristle. They're super stiff. I don't paint in, um, oils. I do not work in oils. I now, one of my art boxes sent me oils. So you're going to see me at some point have fun and struggle through that because I did it once and, um, yep. Was not a fan. My dad used to paint oils, So I have a bunch of oils that he had given me and, um, yeah, I'm really not a fan. Okay. So I'm going to, of course, pull towards me so that it splatters away from me. If I splatter, if I pushed towards the paper, all the paint would come up on me and then get in my face. So this does, this one I like because it's a smaller brush and it does super fine. I'm going to protect my trees here. It does super fine. Um, stars really really fine spray so I'm getting all kinds you know I had some of the bigger ones in the beginning 
My desk is going to be covered in the spots. That's okay, though. That's okay, because I have exciting news. Tonight, after the stream, after we get dinner, hopefully, if I can talk him into it, we just bought me a brand new desk. I was complaining about how bad the glare was here. And he got me a black one. Mm, I'm hoping that won't glare, that it's more of a matte. And if it's not a matte, I might have to paint it with some matte black. But guys, look at, okay, so you see the stars? Look at all the stars. See how fine, nice, really fine. And then just that, that moon glow, the way it separates, it just creates a galaxy naturally on its own. I just paint it in the direction I want my galaxy to go, wet into wet. And then it just separates itself out and... I love it. I love it. I'm really liking the granulation on some of these trees. I think I would darken, you know, this painting, this, the, they need to be darkened up some because, you know, it's dark. It's nighttime. But I would even, like, as that absorbs in, I would say more stars, more, more splatters. Yes. Yes. More. Oh, I know the other ones that I wanted to do. As I did these stars, I also want to do some of the moonstone. How can we not have moonstone? We don't have a moon. We should have moonstone in our stars. All right. I am going to rinse this out so that I can grab some of that and put some of that on there to see, will they sparkle? Open this back up. That is probably gonna be too much in my brush, but we'll see. Why not? Nope, they are coming out perfect. I am definitely going to have to wash this. Oh, that galaxy is going to sparkle. And you can do as many stars or as few stars as you want. So the choice is yours. What was that? Legends of the Hidden Temple. Oh, wow. I don't know where that just came from. Has anybody ever watched that? That was, a, what, a Nickelodeon show um, when we were kids? Yeah, yes, I'm dating myself. Legends of the Hidden Temple. The choice is yours. Ah, yep, I'm dating myself. I'm just grabbing some water to clean this up. And I am going to see what we have in the comments. I just got it all over my brushes. I got a lot of cleanup. Okay, let's see. Thank you, Tara. A couple of colorful dots on one tree and you have a nice Christmas card. That could be true. You might get it in the mail, Joseph. <laughs> A big thank you for helping me. Um, Sheila said, it's always good to see other techniques, isn't it? I, I absolutely agree because there's stuff that I see and I, wow, I never, I never would have thought of doing that. And then, you know, sometimes I try it and it just flops and it's just not my cup of tea, but you know, and, and that's okay because it doesn't have to be everybody's cup of tea. But when you find something that you really uh, enjoy and you find a technique that can help, or maybe it, it's, that's the technique that unlocks the medium for you. You know, it's so important to share. Um, nope, couldn't hear it at all. You must be using the same magic brand that I have. Mine's a different magic brand. I couldn't get your magic hair dryer. It would not help me for anything. Um, See, Joseph said, I love a good toothbrush. Lots of tiny stars indeed. 
many bristles to hold the paint too. Um, but one really painted finger. Oh, oh yeah. I was going to do my nails earlier so that, you know, they'd be all pretty. Well, I'm like very, you know, like if you're going to have long nails, they have to be clean. I can't stand anything under my nails. And especially if my hands are going to be on camera because oh, that's disgusting. You guys don't want to see that. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll paint my nails. I am so glad I did not paint my nails now because I mean, I painted some of my rings, but yeah, I wouldn't have wanted to have to clean it off after having just painted them. So, yep, that is so true. Up close. Oh, up close. It looks 3D. Cool. Well, that is excellent. Yep. See that? See how this is? And this is looking really green. I will darken that up. I'll go back in after. I'll darken it up. And then I'll post a final picture of it over on MeWe. But that is just that kind of, you know, foggy galaxy. I, this is a super easy way just to play and see how wet and wet and how they whoosh and what they do. Um, I have another I, couple ideas um, for watercolor that I want to do. But again, I'm going to be doing... Um, I'm going to be doing regular videos on Tuesdays and I think I'm going to release those at three o'clock also, just so three o'clock becomes, because <clears throat> right now with everybody just starting to learn that I'm going to live stream every week, I think that by keeping things at the same time, it's a little more cohesive. So it'll be like three o'clock. So three o'clock on Tuesday, three o'clock on, um, Thursday, three o'clock on Tuesday will be a regular video. It will not be a live. Occasionally it might be a premiere where I'll be on and can chat with you guys. Um, but mostly it'll just be a release video. And then every Thursday I will be here and it will be at three o'clock. So from three to five today, it was a half hour. Anyways, normally it's going to be from three to five on Thursdays. So then, okay, caution, caution artists at play said, uh, yeah, I gave up on my nails, I gave up painting my nails. I get ruined every time I do art. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. So I'm like, at least here I can just scrape it off and everything is like all good. Um, so let so Michael Perry said you use the toothbrush for masking resist great work, but you need to cover everything or you end up with a lot of little rubber dots. So you're talking about like the toothbrush to, to kind of, um, like I did the stars. If I did that with the toothbrush and my masking fluid, let that dry, then paint my galaxy and then just use my pickup and take that stuff off. And I'd have a bunch of tiny little stars. Do you find that you get tiny little speckles or are they big speckles when you do that with the toothbrush? Inquiring mine. I want to know. Oh, store starving's comment right there. Starving artist said salt water granulates watercolor too. cheap option. <clears throat> yes, I am. Um, Yes. I didn't grab my salt today. I, I have a salt shaker that normally, oh, he's right here. I actually did have him. See, this is my, um, tiki, tiki, tiki man there. And he, uh, if I can do that without spilling salt. So yeah, my tiki, tiki man. And he holds my salt in the studio. And, uh, I have been wanting to do salt water for some techniques. Lindsay was telling me about it and she's like, you have, you have to try it. So I have to try it. But yeah, I really am looking forward to seeing, how, I want to see how that will work. Not even with cheap paints, but I want to see how that will work when I use some salt water with some of my Daniel Smith paints. I am very curious to find out. So let me see. 8 p.m. That's great timing for me. That's great timing. So 3 p.m. for me is 8 p.m. for you, Tara. Is that correct? And caution artists at play. Me too. What a hassle. Yeah. Oh, I, I see it. Joseph, just you, you're not going to talking about painting his nails. He's given up on it. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me switch over now that we're done with that. Let me switch over here. Okay. So good to know. I agree, Belle. Good, good to know. Joseph's no longer painting his nails. <laughs> All right. Well, I can't thank you guys enough for joining me today. Oh, I got to do like the most satisfying part. Oh no, we can't go yet. Just a minute, just a minute. So how many of you use washi tape? I, I love, it's so satisfying. Washi tape. And there's another one. It's a Holbein. It's a Holbein soft tape. Um, I'm going to find that. And I will definitely, I'll use it. I will use it the next time we do watercolor so that I can show you. Um, and then I will link that in that description. And uh, that tape is incredible. Like it doesn't, it's not supposed to weep under. It makes me think of like frog tape for painters, but it's super, oh, look at, isn't that the best part? All right, am I the only one or is like, anybody else get like super satisfaction from peeling the borders. And there we have it. I love washing. Oh my gosh. So Jamie, did you, I don't know if you saw, so this is my, one of my washi tape holders. Basically guys, it's just a cheap little, um, sign that you can get at the dollar store during different holidays, but they're the perfect width to stick your washi tapes in. And they, be, with the different, you know, widths, they fit perfect. And then I just, when I use one, I, when I put it back, I stick the edge on the edge of this. And that way there, I don't have to, um, try to find the end of my washi tape, but let me show you. I need to get Lisa's address because I saw one today and I want to send it to her because there is a washi tape in here and I don't know that Lisa's not here today, but Lisa, if you see this, if you see this, you need to um, send me your address because I need to, you need this in your life. So I've got talking about washi tapes. I've got this stack, which is in the blues. I got these in my art hall, this one and this one. And then I have this one that's full. I think I have another one. Um, so yeah, I love washi tape too. Love washi tape. Um, those love washi tape. I too like to peel the borders. Uh, yeah, I it's so satisfying. So satisfying. Um, and then thank you, Marty. I agree. I agree. Caution artists at play. Peeling the tape is so fun and satisfying. Great idea to hold my tape. Isn't it? I mean, right now, because it's Thanksgiving, they probably have them at the Dollar Tree. If you have a Dollar Tree in your area or a dollar store or a craft hobby type store that sells little things like, you know, the little signs like that. It's just a sign. It was an open back sign that I had no, I mean, you fill my heart with love. You guys complete me. So there was a sign, you know, I'm not going to put that up. It's just like chipboard. And, but like this, it's just polka dots, it's just heart shaped polka dots. I love my washi tape. So heart shaped polka dots that I thought it was great. And one of the other things that I had considered was, you know, if you get like the Reynolds wrap, the aluminum foil or plastic wrap or whatever, and they have that ridge piece that goes there thought about taking that off of one of the boxes when it's gone and then gluing it on here because then I would just roll that out and cut it right off and it would cut super easy not that washi tape is hard to cut right now I just take out the one I want set it rip it and then when I put it back in I keep it taped over the edge so you see like I have a few of them that have been taped over the edge <clears throat> so this guy can I get this out of here you guys have to tell me, is this not Lisa? She needs this at the very least, the very least she needs this for her studio. 
and it came in there and that oh will it show up please show up it's gonna wanna can you see what those are I can't get it so it's there's no way where I can hmm let me switch hold on how about now can you see what they are the purple one they're like they're all my little ponies I'm like, they're all my little ponies. So I have to, I have to send that one to her. I need to have her. So Lisa, if you watch this at all, send me your address, text me so that I can send it to you because that one needs to be in your office. So anyhow, yeah, tons of washi tapes, tons of them, but there you go, guys. Oh, see, now that green is showing a lot better there. See how dark the green is on there? It's showing a lot darker. So that's it. I'm like doing everything mirror image, so. Doesn't she? Lisa, yeah, Lisa does need that for sure. Um. Oh, see that? Jamie said, uh, I've seen it. Bought a dispenser for mine, but I like your idea better. Thank you, Sheila. Oh, look what we got. Thank you. Well, maybe if I clear this, you could see that. Oh, they overlapped each other. Send it to the P.O. box. Yeah, she can pick it up sometime in uh, 2023. <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. Oh, I just had to get my P.O. box also. So, yeah, and I got it. <clears throat> I got it in September. And honestly, I haven't been back over there yet to check it, but I did sign up for the notifications in case something comes into my PO box. They'll tell me, Hey, you're getting some mail. You need to come. I think I touched that and smeared that star, but anyhow, so yeah, that's, I, I also PO box that I always have to keep myself up with going and collecting things. So that's it guys. Thank you so much for joining me for my first ever live stream. You made it very comfortable. Um, you took the anxiety away that I had before I went live. And honestly now, yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. So next week, next week I'll work, we'll go, I'll work in acrylic and I will start working on the, um, if I can turn that back on. there. I'm going to start working on this piece and the reference photo where I can't see it. Oh, I know why I can't see it. So there's the reference photo for that one. Um, That I'm going to be doing, I've got to, you know, I'm, I'm had started putting in a base for the clouds and I wasn't liking it and nothing was mixing right that day and my colors were off and I was so frustrated and I said, you know what, my, my brand new printer was coming and it is here. So yeah, it is now whoop, right there behind me. So I'm going to print out that reference photo because what I like to do is I like to print out the reference photo and I like to kind of tape it up on my easel. And then as I mix my colors, I'll actually dab it on that reference photo that I printed to make sure that that's the color that I'm looking for. And that kind of helps me. So I will be doing, I will be printing that out and I'll have that up there and, um, I'll have my palette probably where I'm sitting right now and I'll be sitting in my 
this chair, this chair is going away. The reason I got my new desk was because it's one of the mechanicals that I can raise and I can lower. So I can actually raise it because this one's too short for me to use. This is the chair that I love and it actually has lock and casters. So when I sit down at the studio uh, or I sit down at the easel, I don't roll to the door on the other side of the room. When I sit at the desk here, I don't roll across the room because I moved wrong um, because, you know, my house was built in 1900 and everything rolls. So I wanted to be able to use this chair both at my um, drafting table, which is the table behind me that my printer's currently on, and this table where I work and draw and do watercolor and whatever, and and then also my easel. So everything in this space, now a one chair will do it all. So that's, that's going to be, hopefully I can get him to tear this stuff out of here tonight to break everything down, get the new one in, and put it all back together. So yeah. You guys were, you were the first, you were here for the very first one. So now when I'm, you know, YouTube famous, I'd be like, Hey, I remember, remember Jamie in that first live stream and Tara was there. I feel like romper room and I see Tara and Marty and Sheila and caution and starving and people like caution and starving. What? <laughs> What's going on? So anyhow, that's what we'll be working on. I can print that out and we will be over there. I'll have a camera on my palette so that you'll be able to see me mixing colors. Um, you'll be able to see that. You'll be able to see the reference photo. And yeah, that's what we'll do next week on Thursday at three on MeWe, Clark Fine Art on my Clark Fine Art page. If you jump over there, if there's other things that you want to see, um, I did write down the negative painting techniques as uh, an option. Drop me, drop me, let me know. Let me know what you want to do when we do this live. Maybe there's something specific that you want to explore and we can do that. Um, I want it to be a fun place where we can come and hang out and help each other and give each other tips. And if it's something that I am not used to working with, I am not afraid to laugh at myself for your benefit. So we can get through it together. So put your suggestions in. Chances are, if you saw my haul, I've got it in this studio because there's way more than I had in that haul that's actually in here. So lots of stuff that I want to try. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you all for joining me. I will have a regular video out next Tuesday. That's probably going to be the art boxes and creating art with what's in those boxes for a little while so I can get through those and and then integrate all of those supplies into the studio, which will help if there's something you want to see and we can expand on it. And um, yeah, that was my first live stream. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great uh, weekend. I will see some of you tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time. No, she's central time, two o'clock Eastern time. So 1 p.m. Central Time over in Lisa's chat. Huge thank you to Joseph for keeping everybody under control and helping answer questions. And I hope I didn't miss any. And if I did, my apologies. I will double check one more time before I jump off of here. Um, thank you, Starving, for that. She always posts that. Like, share, comment. I appreciate that. Yes, Tara. Tara. Tara was very, Tara's been very encouraging. Well, so has Joseph. Joseph was talking me off the ledge. <laughs> I was like so stressed before, before I started. Um, <clears throat> no, thank you, Jamie. I look forward to next week too. I hope to see all of you back here. Um, yeah, so that was the face. See? Okay, that was um, Marty. Glad I caught your first stream. Nice to put a face with the name. So I've always been in my, you know, my voice has been in my videos. My hands have been in my videos. But my face has never been in my videos. My animated me, my little bitmoji me, she advertises all the time on my thumbnails. I finally got my face on my, you go to my YouTube uh, my channel home screen, my picture is there with my little bitmoji. And um, 
but yeah, I hadn't been on camera and that was, that was personal choice at first. And cause I'm like, you know, you, you open yourself up to so much when you open yourself up to the world, basically the world. And I come from a place of positivity and positive comments and I want to uplift my fellow artists and I want to help my fellow artists and I want to contribute in a positive manner to our art community. And I know that 95% of what comes back is going to be the same as what I give. So I'm really, you know, but it's that 5%, right? So I was, that 5% was kind of holding me back because inevitably there is going to be someone there's going to be, there's going to be a troll under the bridge. You know, somebody's going to have that thumbs down. This is awful. You know, whatever comments, whatever. Um, but you know what you guys through other chat, um, in other channels have encouraged me to do this. And really I took a step back this summer. We did have a loss in our family, but I also took a step back in this summer to really examine, is this what I want to do? Can I handle when those things come? Because inevitably they will come. And I decided yes. And now I decided that I'm ready to move forward and really treat this as my business. So you're going to start seeing a lot more. I want regular scheduled videos going out. I want regular content coming to you. And uh, yeah, I hope you stick around. I hope you help me chart the course of this channel because I read the comments, I value your input, and I want to be showing what you want to be watching. So drop me, drop me comments below, hit that thumbs up button. And if you do want to see more comments, I have more comments. If you do want to see more content and you want to see what we're going to be doing and, and be around for those live streams, click that subscribe button and ring that bell notification. I don't ask for subscribe usually anymore. Um, because you know, some people will subscribe just because you say subscribe and I'm not looking for that. I am looking to build a good, strong, um, positive community of artists who lift each other up and are happy to hang out with each other and ha have that camaraderie and we can all value from it. So that's what I'm hoping to build. So if you do want more of that, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button, ring the bell notification, and I will see you in the next one. So Thanks guys. Thanks so much for being here. I will talk to you in the next one.